hawo ene rasi adinos tesari nein this is one them yad and again just following up we had a sudden interruption you know of the programming but this is to continue the reasoning so where were we we were looking at the the Nas and the Farrell um uh, interview and then looking at the many comments and we was touching on the heights as well as we want to touch on this book spiritual warfare and we was about to make a point about the fact that we as so-called African American blacks so forth and so on and when we look at say Nas and 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 Farrell and other black artists you know from the ghetto or suburbs some of them but be it as it may black so-called people in America and they get to the point of celebrity, so forth and so on, where they can speak out and they might say a little something about Africa or do a little something about Africa. But then, you know, we see these comments and, you know, we respond among ourselves like, you know, this is like just a, a damn shame, you know, and um, how it comes down to the mind. And then you remember that nigger organization, the NAACP. Now, we should already know how they're connected. And some of y'all might be connected with this. Some of y'all may have got an education through them. Maybe they paid your way to college, and now you are uh, eternally grateful and are willing to sell your soul because of, you know, a paltry education or whatever like that. Miseducation, really, more, more accurately. So we have to look at the big context that, first of all, we don't want to overstand um, even the civil rights movement and, and, and how that was dream a lie. That was a dream, a lie. We have a new CD coming out dealing with that particular subject matter and just showing one's the proof. I mean, they show us this proof right in our face, and there's many folks that say that they just don't believe it. You know, they can't accept it, so forth and so on, because they prefer their fantasy. And this all contributes to the overall state of affairs of black people. You know how they have, like, a State of the Union address? There should be some state of black folks address, even if it's not officialized. We have to really look at the, 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 the big state, not just right now, at this present time, Africa being um, overrun by the Gentiles, which sounds strangely biblical and prophetic. How it says for a certain time and season that Jerusalem will be overrun by the Gentiles, and now our Jerusalem, even New Jerusalem, even Ethiopia and other parts of Africa being run, overrun by the Gentiles coming in there, investing and, and laying down new roots and so forth and so on, while we're over here in the diaspora, you know what I'm with a bunch of unelected leaders who speak for us and who help to shape the views of the black um, majority or the masses and we're speaking about like the NAACP, for example. We saw a video that we saw seen a little bit um, earlier. You probably could look it up. It's like an eight-part video, and it's called I think Dajjal. Dajjal. That's the Islamic way of I think saying like Antichrist, so forth and so on. The one-eyed one, Illuminati, right? It's called Dajjal Illuminati, and it has like eight parts to it. Check that out if you can. Check that out. There's probably more to it. Um, I think it's Anahir, Anakir, um, one of these, uh, um, you see, Muslim youths out there who's been putting together some interesting videos, so forth and so on. And, you know, we like his works as well. But the video is up there on the YouTubes. Check it out and, and just bear with it. You probably will say you're already familiar with it. And that's another thing we as so called black people and the niggas amongst us do too often because you're vaguely familiar with something that's consciousness and truth you can't um learn nothing more about it it's like i know that right yeah 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 whatever like that and that just shows me like that we're under spiritual warfare and we also have to recognize um the next level of the the warfare, which is the spiritual aspect of it. The evil spirit has been 
Okay, let me put this in biblical. For the biblical brothers and sisters studying, you might get this or might be able to, to, to reference it. But all I would say look into it. But we're going to talk about things like if a scientist is on TV, he's going to talk about things in terms of science. If a lawyer is on TV in terms of the law, politician in terms of politics. So since we recognize the real truth of the scriptures when it's properly applied both to self as well as to one's world and one's environment. We want to approach it like this, that there was the Israelites. When the Israelites were on their way to the promised land, I think it's in the book of Numbers, that there was a particular thing, Moabites. There were the Moabites, right, um, people. And there was a, a, a Balak. He wanted to curse the children of Israel. He wanted to curse them. So he got this heathen... You know, like got this sorcerer, this this Merlin, this this so-called shaman, this spiritualist. Like we could say today, like you know, Illuminati or Satanist. He got like a Satanist in that sense to do his dirty bidding. And this Satanist was known as uh, Balaam. Balaam, and we've talked on Balaam in different videos because we are persuaded that if ones would just bear the teaching and just understand it in its proper context, not whether we are right or, or, or the other one is wrong or we are wrong and somebody else is right, this, this goes beyond these little petty personalities, you know, the, the, the real so-called big picture. Anyway, Balaam, spiritualist as he was and not really a follower of the true God, he still recognized there was a true God. In other words, even the Illuminati, the globalists, the rest of them, they recognize there's limits. You see what I'm saying? Because if they could do it all, like I always say, if they could just take over the whole thing, then why don't they just take over the whole thing instead of waiting like years and doing it through politics and just, 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 just take it? Because they recognize they can't. But all the hype that goes out is like they're getting stronger because people are caught in a frozen psychological state. You know, and that's the inertia. That's where the movement, you know, the movement has taken on uh, like a, calci a, a calcification, a calcification has become calcified and, and, and um, when, when we say consolidated, not in that positive sense, but has been made a solid instead of flowing, instead of moving, we, we, you know, we're stuck. Like even right now, everybody's probably wondering who's going to be the next so-called president of the United States. As though that really makes a difference to who we are, what we are experiencing, and where we're at right now. I mean, when we talk about the whole United States politics, the globalists, so forth and so on, what will make things better, we're talking about, well, what will con allow them to continue to do what they're doing and we remain perpetually in this state of inertia. But back to Balaam. So Balaam recognized that there's a true God, you know, and, and he even says Jah or Yah or Yahweh basically has, has, has put a limit, the Almighty has put a limit on what he could do. And instead of bless, it's cursing the children of Israel, he had to bless them. Of course, this vexed the, the person who, you know, hired, you know, hired this, this false prophet. He was a false prophet but he still had spiritual power. See, this is what was interesting. He was a false prophet, but he still had the potential to cause higher dimensional um, forces to work in this dimension and make things happen, except to those who was under covenant, the al -Kidan, to those who was under blessing, it was like they had a spiritual immunity. So when you hear us speaking about um, repentance and the teaching and trying to give the, the different example, this is to persuade ones to recognize what the real picture is and then make your choice. Don't just throw it off. If you throw it off and find that's the right thing, it, it'd probably be way too late. But each one has a right to decide their own particular destiny. So when Balaam could not curse the children of Israel, the, the doctrine of Balaam, and we find doctrine of Balaam when we go to the book of Revelation, and I'm saying all of this is connected with niggas. All this is directly connected with niggas. Now, just because niggas are niggas, you know, just because we see black folks in the situation that they are, the word tells us there's a remnant. 
Do you recall that? There's, there's a remnant. And Rastafari, I remember a lot of the Rastafari artists and singers, there was this refrain um, that, um, like about the careless Ethiopians, which basically is not just the native Ethiopians, but is black folks, in other words, whether in Africa, Ethiopia, whether in America, North America, South America, or Canada, the ones who are spiritually careless, they said like 8 million or 800,000, I forgot the number, but it was an eight something. They, they will go down with Babylon. It's like the Matrix movie, that clip that we put up there, I'm sure you've seen it before, with um, Morpheus. They're walking through, it seemed like Wall Street area, um, a downtown metropolis sort of area, and people are milling back and forth, so from so most, you know, most of them wearing darker colors, but then a lady in red comes by. And Neo, the new Negro, when you understand the real mother of the matrix, therefore the mind, the perspective is coming from, the real lessons to be learned in it, the Neo, the new Negro, portrayed by the actor in the movie as Neo, he um, is paying attention to the lady in red. He's looking her up and down like, yeah, I'd like to get with this. Mm. And... <laughs> Morpheus asked him, you know, did you hear what I said? Do you know what I mean? Are you listening? You know, in other words, he said, Sima, 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 Shima, Shima, are you hearing? Are you listening attentively? Are you seeking to be obedient to the truth of what you're receiving? Are you acting on the knowledge? Do you acknowledge? And um, Neo was like, uh, 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 he said, look again. And then you see that, 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 that lady in red right, became the so-called Mr. Smith or the agent, you know, Mr. Smith, the agent. Now, when you, when you understand that spiritually, this is why we, we want to recommend this book right here, um, um, and we're tying this in with the fact that we've been feeling like spiritual oppression, you know, a downpression, you know, just different things on, on very sub. When, when you're spiritually sensitive to it, you know, you, you pick up on it. Other times people will blame different people, situations, nonsense, because they're not spiritually mature. But when you're spiritually mature, you begin to recognize exactly what's going on. But even if you recognize what's going on, you need to have the, the knowledge. You understand? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You need to have the knowledge in order to act accordingly, in order to even overcome you know, and this is why we, rec we are um, recommending, you know, we recognize, I think that's the first thought we were saying, we recognize this book, and we want to recommend this book, and want you to recognize this book right here, too. Now, of course, it says, be live or believer. Now, we already went through the math on that. We know it's the amen, and the mitmanan, and it means to accept that's true. That's when we get back to the root, it's amen, you know, it's the amen. So, anyway, try to... Try to overstand, in other words, the believer's guide to what it says right there, spiritual warfare, right? The believer's guide to spiritual warfare in this book here by Thomas B. White. Thomas B. White, right? And some people might be, be believers, be believers, you know, be as lying. You need to grow up, man. You know, that's kindergarten. We recognize that, but then we suss it out, you know, even deeper than that. Yovas, because unless you're speaking the original language or an original language, you're still speaking this this foreign language. You're still speaking this corrupt language. So it's to overstand so you can use it, you understand, and not be used by it. So this book teaches or expresses in some very um, simple and direct lessons how to recognize spiritual attack how to pray for deliverance, or what we would say as uh, others would say deliverance, we say deliverance to break generational curses, um, to protect yourself and your children. Mm. In an age of growing darkness, in an age of growing skotos, that's the, that's the Greek word, skotos, and skotos on a level, it can also be interpreted like 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 shit. You know, basically scotos. You know, um, this book is is very much recommended. We might um, um, touch on certain parts in here, certain aspects of this particular book right here. And what we're going to try to do is get this book at our website, 
And I think if the price is correct right here, this was like, um, it says $12.99. It might be more, it might be less. Maybe you can find it somewhere else. Maybe you can find it in your local, you know, Bible bookstore if you have one. Um, I don't think it's old enough that you're going to find a, like a copy of it. I know there's other pages out there. You can search the Internet because you might find some some interesting um, things on online. But I, I highly recommend this. You know, I, mean, I really highly recommend this for, for many significant reasons. The, the individual, and, and I think that the Holy Spirit guided this particular individual, whether they're white, black, or whatever like that. You know, when you mature in the good news of the King of Kings, then you know how to distinguish, you know, saying not just all black people are good, you know, because that's another you my color but not my kind kind of a thing, and that's getting folks hurt too you know, spiritually and otherwise. Um, but it's to recognize what the truth is, you know. When you recognize what the truth is, both now and past, some things even in the past happened. We, we can't change it, whether it's slavery. You know, we talk about slavery too, and that's another kind of um, stumbling block for a lot of our, our, our people because they get, they get caught up on that. And when they view slavery or what happened, they view it with discouragement because they're not really either told the truth or they haven't accepted the truth, that slavery, you understand? And what happened, that, that whole experience of the lost sheep was our own damn fault. Because I read that there was a comment here, one um, on this Nas and, and Feral thing, um, there was a comment that we don't need African-American artists because they have sold their soul to the devil Illuminati. They want to go and spread the Illuminati agenda to African musicians. Then the last portion of this individual, I think this is um, um, Okuo Mose, Okuo Mose, um, three hours ago, or maybe it's a little bit more, four or five or so. It says they want revenge for slavery. They want revenge for slavery. That's an interesting point, too. And I think, no, I know. This is just more I've been thinking about what I know. And I know that if any of us or if any of you have that idea even and you claim to be in him and of him and learning of him, I would say keep learning and, you, and, and you're not quite mature spiritually on that particular um, issue. You know, that's what we know as the blame game. Oh, the Africans sold us into slavery. And we, the like children of Israel, we're the children. Well, if you recognize that we're the children of Israel, you know, if you recognize who you are, that's what we say, who we are, who we are, you know, where we're from, what this is, how we got here, and what this whole thing is all about. Most folks still do not have a good grasp on it. But I don't blame the folks who don't get it or the folks who've been lied to or deceived, so forth and so on. And I don't blame them for being, say, the way and in the situation that they're in. But if ones are not willing to learn, you see, before we even get involved in anything, this is one reason why even the Society of His Majesty and this Brotherhood has been taking careful steps going, moving forward, even with discipleship, to make sure that each individual can do what they want to do, so to speak. But we're looking for those who want to do Yah's will, do Jah's will, you know what I'm saying, to live Jah's way. But in order to do that, we must learn about it. And, and, and the whole process of learning about these things and really accepting the truth about these things, of course we go through a lot of changes and growth just by even recognizing that slavery, according to the Bible, and according to the true history and the hidden history of our people here in the Americas and the Caribbean, was our own damn fault. Now, this does not excuse those who went beyond, you understand, beyond the limits and did wickedness in that process. See, a lot of folks think by saying that, well, that means it's right, everything they No, I'm talking about how we as a people, you understand, disempowered ourselves spiritually. So now this is the siphoning. Because we have to re-empower ourselves spiritually first. You see, when we talk about the Trinity, it's more than just saying Selassie, I, Selassie. It's recognizing in what image and in the image of God and, and the mystery, you know, the half of the story of that that's really important for us who are serious about it. 
you know, that we are spirit, you know what I'm saying, we are soul, and we are body in that order. So we first have to take care of spiritual matters, in other words, the mind. So when we talk about the mind, we can talk about heart and mind. Heart and mind is soul and spirit. It's another way of saying soul and spirit. You understand? However, the world teaches us body. You know, there's a lot on body. A lot of people not feeling good with their bodies. Not that they're sick or anything physically or whatnot, but because of what's going on in their mind, you know, spiritual wickedness, you know, certain ideas, you know, these ideas which plug into those layers of our, of our spirit that deals with our God consciousness. In other words, who is God? You understand? Um, did God create me? Do I, do, do I acknowledge a creator? Have, have I, do I seek the creator? Or I'm going to say this is just all evolution and i got to be about making those papers, Joe. That means that those folks are open. They're open now to spiritual wickedness and as time goes on, even demonic possession. You know, I, I mentioned this earlier that um, the Bible teaches us, the scriptures teaches us that um, the devil has taken some people um, captive, that the devil has taken some folks captive against their own will to do, to do the devil's will. And I meditated on that verse, and um, let's see right here. I meditate on this particular verse right here, and it's in the New Testament, right? It's in the New Testament. Um, the devil's, I just had it a moment ago, the devil's, do the devil's will, or by the devil's will, like against their, you know, against their, well, some of you are probably shouting out the verse. I just had it a couple of moments ago. Um, I've, I've been taken captive by the devil to do his uh, to do his um, his will. Oh, it's 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 uh, um, was it James? Yeah, it's James. I think it's James. Uh, it's right here. Um, and James. What does this thing looking up all well? Uh, okay, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, has been taken against their will. You know, so when we look in the scriptures and recognize that some of us have got into situations or were born into certain situations. But when we come to 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 um a certain clarity of uh of 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 consciousness you know, when we come to a certain clarity of um, consciousness, um, what is up with this this search thing right here? Yeah, we'll get our neck on name. Yeah, some of these things right here. Okay, we'll get that verse. Have been taken captive by the devil, right, to do his will. So some, let's just continue. Some have been taken captive by the devil. Sometimes you can't depend always on the on the computerized stuff. Sometimes you really have to you know, um, exercise the mind and exercise God's will within, still depending on that technology. Technology is good, but becoming too, uh, as we say, uh, deep-ended, you know, to become too deep-ended on it is what um, brings us, you know, brings us under the yoke, you know, brings us under the yoke of the enemy you know, to becoming too deep-ended on it. So you have some who have been taken captive by Satan, who have been taken captive by the devil. Now, this is not to make an excuse for the Nazis and the Pharaohs, and, and I'm not even to be the judge of that, you know, let, get, leave all judgment to Jah about whether it was their fault. I don't see anything clearly that tells me, okay, that they either did it to themselves or they probably made bad bad decisions, but then I could say, um, on one level or another, haven't we all? You understand now where they're at with that. You know, is 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 their own, you know, is their own, um, is their own uh, decision. But what we need to recognize is that some have been taken captive by the devil. You understand, or by Satan, by the devil to do his will. And then there are some who who who, who have chosen to make a deal with the devil. So we really have to, 
you know, disting distinguish. You understand? We really have to distinguish between, you know, which is which. You know, have these people made a deal? Have they sold their souls? And in and, and one of the comments, I think uh, one um, one individual had 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 touched on that. How one had, um, you know, sold their souls. You know, they 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 sold their souls basically for rock and roll. And there's a video out there as well that talks about that. How one's ones in order to um, achieve or to 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 become something. But why did they get those ideas in their mind? You know, in the sense where. You know, where did they get these sort of ideas that this was a standard to be achieved? A couple of years ago, there was a BET, um, not really a documentary, it was sort of like a documentary special, really, perhaps. And I think Cornel West was on that particular one as well. This was, this was a couple of years ago. Anyway, what it was talking about, some of the older black folks was talking to some of the younger black folks, and they were or about the younger black folks. You know, like you hear some of the older folks say how, like, young folks, we don't appreciate nothing, and, and, and you know, we are this and that, and, and we are ungrateful for all their sacrifices and, and, and how we have every opportunity in front of us, so forth and so on. You know that I call that the civil rights generation, you know, the, the so-called 40-year-ago civil rights generation. But then when you recognize that's when the whole conspiracy or, or the next l level of the satanic attack, whether we call it COINTELPRO or we call it the Antichrist agenda because COINTELPRO and the, and the Antichrist agenda is one and the same. They wanted to prevent the rise of the black messiah. Now, if a black messiah is God's messiah, and they said they want to stop the rise of the black Messiah. They want to stop the rise of the black Christ, but they really want to stop the rise of Christ. Plain and simple, you know. So when we recognize that aspect of even such a COINTEL Pro program, we can see the, the latent and the patent Satanistic agenda of it. But there's a lot of the, the, the people who have set up this, I'm talking about black folks, you know, black folks, because the, the older generation of black folks, as that BET documentary talked about, the older generation, um, and it was interesting because some of the, okay, let me just give you a little quick setup of this. So the program was, a, was are the, is a civil rights movement being lost on the youths, in other words, the younger generation of black folks. And a lot of the older folks said yes that the younger generation don't know about the sacrifices made by Martin Luther King Jr. and others, you know, for black folks. And now they're just going around, you know, um, uh, with like seeking bling bling and, and big cribs and, 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 and to, you know, materialism, so to speak. And one of the hip-hop artists, I forget which particular artist, had said, when he and others look at the civil rights movement and you see how sharp um, ones like Dr. King was and how people got dressed, they, they put on their Sunday best, you know, to go march knowing full well that the racist American white man was going to sick dogs and beat them up and water hose them. And they knew a lot of these because they, they had preparations, you know, so forth and so on. So they knew a lot of these things were going to happen. But still they put on their Sunday best, their finest. And one artist said, if you look at King, I mean, he was sharp. Sitting up there, in the, he, he, he's, he's dressed well. Now, the, the youth are saying, we learned this materialism from y'all. Then the whole, I have a dream, I have a dream march speech if you listen to the entirety of it, it was about cashing a check. Straight up, it was about money. You know, so the youths are saying, wait, there, there are no jobs, no opportunities. One, one um, present lecturer, um, Saracen Seti, Brother Saracen Seti out there, in one of his lectures that we've seen, I think, on Nicki Minaj, a clip in a Nicki Minaj video, exposed video, he talked about that the some of the older folks, you know, the content folks, the entitlement folks, 
are saying things like, um, you know, look at the youths out there selling drugs. And even this Newt Gingrich, you got to watch that right there. You know what I mean? You know, just you be, be in the world, not of the world, but still know what's going on, you know? And he's talking all this stuff about that blacks don't got no role models. And look, look, listen, we've been talking about this for a while. Others before us been talking about this same uh, black folks. You understand who really care about black folks, who who's willing to you know give that ultimate sacrifice to make sure we do our part in this godly and holy struggle. Yeah, you know I'm just thinking like yeah. You know, you, these thoughts be coming to you and everything. Anyway, um, so the, let's get back to the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement was about starting to get on the economic level. The older folks, as Saracen said, he said, listen, why don't they stop being lazy? I'm not quoting him directly, but basically, why don't they, like, um, 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 form corporations, you know, form businesses, a lot of these older folks, some of them even ha ha collected some pretty pennies, you know, some money and stuff, and just use it on traveling to Europe or something like that, you know, or going to see the white Jews over there in, in what you call them, and never even touching Ethiopia or Africa or recognizing the full, or even Egypt, when Egypt was more open to go into. Um, so why don't they set up corporations? So when you think about why Nas and Pharaoh and a lot of them um, aren't really doing more. And this is this is no kind of excuse whatever for them personally, but I'm saying that we need to look at the bigger context of the picture. So now we have New Gingrich, you know what I'm saying? New Gingrich out there saying what he's saying that blacks don't got, you know, no role models. Think about that. Of course he's running against Obama, but in running against Obama, he's 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 smacking all black folks. And so far, I haven't heard really maybe Juan Williams, you know, he asked a couple of questions. Not really too challenging, a little bit timid, but what what do you expect? You know, keep your eye on the prize, they say, right? But he's saying there's no black role models. That the only way for them to make money, the youths, is to sell drugs and, 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 and to, you know, go out there in some illegal business that besides the illegal aspect of black prosperity in America, that's the only examples of prosperity that black folks have. Now, he gets away with that. And then when many of us say that the civil rights, it was a lie. It, it, was, it was a terrible lie. I, I can't say that uh, Martin Luther King um, intended it. You know, I can't really, I don't have enough information to judge that. But from what I can see, he was a part of it, and he was a key instrumental, willy or nilly. Whether he was willy, nilly, or silly, you understand? He is the one who said what he said. He got up there and made that, you know, made that speech. He got up there to talk about, we came here to cash a check. Now, the youths not having those opportunities, when we see what went on with the, the auto industry out in California, remember the whole Bloods and Crips? When the Bloods and Crips parents and others who, who, who migrated out here, there were jobs, there were other things, but what, they, what the, the white man who still runs America, like one big plantation, what he did, he recognized that Asia and third world countries are opening up. So he'll send the job over there for pennies on the dollar and instead of paying these niggas anything and, and, and let them get an honest, you know, an honest uh, day's wage. So the youths now seeing the frustration of their parents and how the dream became a lie and how there was no food in the house, nothing going on, no programs or nothing. In their frustration, they did what any human being, almost any, under the same circumstances would do. And if they did do, no one would condemn if those same youths, the same youths out there, I'm talking about those who are who are hustling. You know, I mean, I mean, there's some youths out there who are just murderers. Now, straight up, there's some who are just, you know, I mean, there's a whole different spirit right there. But some are trying to hustle so they can make a little something because they've been denied a lot of opportunities in this in this slavery land. You see, we don't want to talk about slavery like it didn't happen. 
We'll talk about everything else in American history instead of really addressing slavery. And de- this is a hot button issue. It makes a lot of people feel upset, and people don't want. So what? Well, you think we always want to hear about the Holocaust? What is this going to be anti-Semitic or something? Because we're saying that if y'all can talk about the Holocaust and that happened to you or you a legend, so that's your story. So what about I and I's story? What about our story? And this is important to address because I think about the, the, the children that are born, say, even in this time, right? With what is available out there, with the consciousness, what do you expect later on? You see, and a lot of us are going through a lot of different, you know, I could talk about my situation, but I'm sure many of y'all can talk about your situation. But here's what's interesting, that the majority of our situations, beyond just being personal decisions, have a systemic, there's a systemic virus. I mean, how are we going to have a land that was founded on bloodshed and slavery and, and, and inequality all of a sudden pretend to be equal and just and fear and the policemen of the... I mean, can you see the hypocrisy? Now, that's just one level right there, you know, and that doesn't really even get in the, into the heart of what some of you brothers and sisters have posted um, concerning this particular video, which I think is, is very, is very um, interesting. Because let me just go back to the heights again. That was... The last one was um, Okuo Mose. Um, if I'm pronouncing your name correct, um, or according to your pronunciation, should I say? Um, now there was another comment by the the, the heights that we thought was interesting because in going through everything else, all the other spiritual mixed up moods, attitudes, a lot of other kind of forces, you know, especially if you're spearheading such, you know, what I mean, as like a young line of Judah. Then you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna face these things. This is why a lot of folks, you know, a lot of one be talk, 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 but they're not gonna really get out there and really do the work or work with those who are doing the work. And this kind of segues a little bit into the Heights second comment, where he says Bono can go ahead and do that because he tries and actually hires people to set shit up, which is fucking funny as hell. And that's true, he sets it up, plus, you know, the Illuminati and the rest of them back their own, you know, so forth and so on. Then he says, Height says, African Americans were told to return. This, this, this line is classic, bro. Thank you, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> African Americans were told to return to fucking Africa by Bob Marley, by Hollis Selassie, and by Jesus. Get the fuck out, you lazy fucking bums. Ain't no savior coming because you ain't prepared to receive him. Fucking none of you. Now, of course, some might say, oh, that's not true. No, it is a true point. I think more of us need to have this sort of focus, you know, like shake the tree and, and see see what, what, what loose fruit. You know, see what loose fruit, you know, prune the tree and let it grow even better. Pick a bank, the, the last part of this you must hear, bros and sisters, um, pick a bank in Africa, moms, pick a bank in Africa, let's say the Ethiopian National Bank. <laughs> Open a fucking account there and start developing shit, start a partnership. Th- that That is classic right there. You know, that is, I don't know how you said it when you was writing it or how you, maybe you would say it better or whatnot like that. But we need more of those. We need to have, like, public service announcements like that, straight up. You know, you know like they have these new um, public service announcements, which they expect to upset, you know, to, to, to make people act emotion, to hit an emotive chord with folks. So they have these about weight loss and about smoking and about a lot of other issues which are for shock value, like Peter, show you the animals. So you recognize this is what's going on. 
So people say, oh, animals are being persecuted. People are being killed. Uh, you know, babies are being raped. And, you know, if, if people say, oh, that sounds, I can't believe that. But if you see something, you'd be like, oh, dip, I hate that. You stop it. So it, it, it makes people, you know what I mean, it, it, it moves the crowd, so to speak. And um, this is why we love this particular comment. You know, this particular comment right there, because the question I ask is this, why, you understand, uh, why isn't more of that going on? Partly as individuals. Each of us is, is, is somewhat um, liable, more or less. But it's also, if there's a, a, a new world order, right, people talk about new world order, all they're trying to do is jack something that's bigger than themselves. You know what I'm saying? Something that's bigger than all these. The Freemasons are riding it because everybody else is afraid of the idea of New World Order. They don't, the Chinese have their New World Order. The Indians got a New World Order. The Russians, the Arabs think about their New World Order. Everybody's thinking about the, 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 the Spanish, Latin American. They think about New World Order. The Iranians think about New World Order. Martians and, and people on the moon probably think about New World Order. But niggas, you know what I'm saying? They think about old school. You know, taking it way back. They want to make America like it used to be. <laughs> no, I, I, I kid you not. I kid you not. Was watching Tavis Smiley. You know, sometimes I agree with the brother. Sometimes I don't. But still, I'm happy at least he got a show out there because once in a while somebody's gonna say something that hopefully really means something and and can even inspire me or or give me more of a four one one. You know, saying about what's going on. Tavis Smiley had this show on the, for a couple of days. I just caught the last show of it at George uh, George Washington or something University in D.C. where he had different speakers: Michael Moore, Cornel West, um, that 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 money lady with the funny hair. What's her name? Um, I, I I just forgot her name. I'm not going to name everybody up there. Just some main people who you probably know, right? Um, and they were talking about what you know what to do, what's going on, and and how things look and. And um, Cornel West was being his prophetic self. You know, he was being his, his you know, prophetic. But I, I like how he's, you know, people say he's not saying enough, but maybe you need to say something too. You know what I mean? He's saying something. You know, I can see, okay, I agree with, I disagree. But people saying he ain't saying something, writing something in a comment. Why don't you get on the horn, get on the video, even if you don't, don't want people to see you, disguise yourself or something, post it up there. You know what I mean? Because we're not willing to shape the current, but we're being shaped by a current. You know what I'm saying? So we're still in a passive, you know, a kind of a passive. We'll sit back and watch this, but if we don't like something, we'll, we'll curse the TV screen, or now people can make a little comment. They'll make a little comment about it. But I think if your point of view is important, you would do more to either share it or build on it you understand? If you think you got the right way, somehow else got the wrong way, well, you should do more to put out what's the right way. You see, but I know people got a lot of other, you know, fear issues and stuff. And if you're not born again, you're not going to really be able to do all you can in, 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 in your calling. Because the gifts and the calling of God, of God are without, you know, are without repentance. In other words, you can have a gift or a calling before you really get your spiritual head and heart right and exact. You may still be in process, but if Jah gave you a call, Jah gave you a call. Just get your head and your heart, you understand, in, 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 in proper groundation and, and based and built up on the right and the righteous foundation. Because the, the, the spirit is very important too. One of the reasons why a lot of folks don't do more in Africa Besides not seeing the example, so from some, but you know, sometimes people do things and they don't see nobody else do it. They, 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 they do something, they see it's a good thing to do, you understand, and they do it. So that, that kind of excuse that we need to see more of, I mean, what niggas going to want to become a president after black, you know, person after how they're treating Obama and, and what Obama's doing. You understand, just, just as a point of reference, because even though he might be some illuminous and Freemasonic's choice, you know what I'm saying? The other side of their brotherhood, because they're not all agreed, but what they are agreed about is this is a time of change. And if we do not shape this time of change the way we want to shape it, you know, like a new age is like a, it is still undetermined. 
in a sense. The only thing that's really determined is is it's not going to be exactly the same as it was, and it pretends they're going to be radically different. You see what I'm saying? So you hear these globalists talking about all these homeopathic issues and, and, and these environmental issues, and, these, and they're taking over these social issues because many of us who might have known, like, for example, Africa. How long has the Rastafari been speaking about Africa and, and the whole Rastafari um, level? The movement has turned into inertia. You know, this movement of Rastafari has turned into an inertia. Not for everybody. Some are still making moves. You understand? What we're talking about is, is more than half. You understand? More than a, a small percentage. It's not like a small per percentage is effing off. You understand? But a larger part of the movement is really making, you know, it's like we look at the Jews, the white European Jews. A small percentage of them are effing off, are just, just, just even wasteful to other Jews. But they allow them because so many of the, the other so-called Jews are about their various callings and all collectively is pushing forward a certain agenda. You cannot ask one. I mean, there are some Jews who have issues with Israel you know, the state of Israel and what's the Palestinian thing, so forth and so on. But they all are overwhelmingly supportive. If something comes up about, you know, the state of Israel, they're going to go to a banquet, they're going to spend, their, they're going to give their money, you understand? You know, they're going to put their, their treasure where their heart is, you know? And a lot of us, I'm not going to say a lot of our people don't because we wanted to thank a lot of the brothers and sisters who've been supporting this ministry with their prayers, with whether tithes or with 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 um, donations or offerings or or different um, merchandise books or other DVDs or products that we have materials that we have available and we want to thank you and we're going to speak more on that as well. But it's just a basic principle. These are just basic principles. So when we saw the heights saying what. It, he said, we, we must have thought about it, this was like, what, a day ago? It was only a day ago? Well, I guess it was a whole day we was really thinking about it. You know, we was, we was looking over that, you know, in our minds. It was like, that is so true. You know, but the part when you said African Americans were told to return to effing Africa by Bob Marley, by Hala Selassie, and by Jesus, that is classic. I mean, I mean, I mean that's, that, that's, you should write. No, for real. You know, I mean, just like that, because... People will read that. I, I think so. People will disagree with it, but, you know, at least you, you maybe start people thinking, you know. And um, ain't no savior coming. You know, and a lot of folks, anyway, you know, but that's a good point. No savior coming because you ain't prepared to receive him. Fucking none of you. Pick a bank in Africa, let's say the Ethiopian National Bank. Open a fucking account there and start developing shit. Start a partnership. You know, some people will talk about, oh, look at look at Africa or Nigerian scams. Get the f out of here, Nigerian scams. Really? You know, the biggest scam is probably this this dream thing. You know, the American dream is probably the biggest scam. You're gonna talk about a couple of Nigerians. You understand who are a little bit, a couple of Nigerians who together just make one Wall Street business. One Wall Street, uh, 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 one department in a Wall Street firm. In other words, it, come on, get off of that. But see, those are the things that Babylon puts out there. You're like now they're talking about, you know, civil war. Every little, if you notice, every little thing that happens in Africa now, they're showing you more and more of it because they know that many people are touching base with these sort of reasonings. You know, and people begin to think. People are beginning to work in certain limited groups and, and trying to develop um, contingency plans. Like, okay, say Babylon, say America for the next 20 years. I'm, I'm not saying that's a, not no prophecy now. But th let's just say America goes on for a while, right? Okay. But let's say it doesn't. Then what? Do we have any contingency plans? individually, in our families, or in our faith-based societies, or among the brotherhood, do we have any contingency plans? It's, it's not too late as long as it's not too late. So there's still time and opportunity. But here's what I know. I know that first things first, that ones have to get their heads and their hearts together. You see what I'm saying? And see, 
a lot of folks still are like on the fence. You know what I mean? They're like they're like on the fence. They're not walking. They're walking to the left sometimes. They're walking to the right sometimes. They're not really on that straight and narrow. You see, and because they're not on that straight and narrow, they're easy to become double-minded. You know, like for example, Africa got a lot of problems. They say, you know. And there's a lot of wild stuff happening, they say. But look what's happening in America. Listen to the news every night. And that's just a little bit. Some things they don't tell you for years later on until you see it in a special or footnote somewhere. They don't tell you about a lot of things that are happening right here in America. So, brothers and sisters, let me just recap right here. And we're going to go through some of the other, the other comments. But we want to thank the Heights and, and, and a, couple, a, couple of, a couple of others of you out there. A, a, a lot of y'all, though a lot of people are differing in their opinions about things. You know, a lot of folks are differing in their opinions about things. What I think is still very interesting is that there are folks who are not satisfied, you understand, and who are somewhat outspoken you understand, about what's going on right now. And like we said, we thought there would be a couple of comments maybe, you know, but because there were so many comments about it, it shows that it ain't over until it's over. You know, where there's life, there's still hope, you know. And while there's opportunities of, 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 of freedom of travel and movement, both us individually must first of all become willing. Don't wait on no, no group or folks or whatever unless you are working with that group and, and you are somehow in covenant and you trust. You know, you have to trust. Trust is a big, is a, is a big thing too because so much trust amongst us has been worn down. If we were to say, all right, we're going to open uh, a bank account in, in the National Bank of Ethiopia and for all the the, 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 the investors in it or the main board or whatnot, we're going to open the records. You know, it's not going to be publicized for everybody out there because it's not really for everybody besides those who are investing in it. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Those who are on the board of directors or part of that should know about that. It's not a publicly traded business or stock or whatever like that. And the main thing is the trust factor. First of all, not just do we trust each other, but are we trustworthy? You know, me and my sister and my sister wife, we went to a meeting some years ago. And it was about bringing some, like, either shea butter or other things from, like, one of the West African nations. Um, importing, you know, import, export, some other stuff, too. I think there was some oil and natural gas and all this other kind of stuff, right? And while we was getting ready for the meeting, one of the the the... the Black men there. I don't want to say brother. I don't use brother loosely anymore. You understand? No, I, I, I really don't. Because not everybody you include in your family. It's not everyone who is your family. It's not all family that's family. So, you know what I mean? So, um, so one of the, the black men that was there, right? Um, I don't think he was a roster. He was kind of like on the fence and stuff. Anyway, um, he was like, yeah, but don't give me no money. You know, somebody like like, like almost like he was saying, we need to invest in this, but don't trust him with the money. I mean, Freudian slip or not. I mean, it was good. If that's true, I'm happy he said that. And if it's true, one, one should say that. But it seems like he was spearheading this whole meeting. You know, like, like he was the main, you could say, informant. He was trying to get us to invest in that. And, you know, I had brought some other folks with me because they said bring people who might be interested. And I was just so shocked because the, the other folks who was with me, they picked up on it immediately too. And, and they, you know, we listened to the presentation so forth and so on. But it, 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 it touches on that trust factor, you know, and there's, and there's folks that we should be able to trust and who are trustworthy. And even in the best of situations, you know, sometimes there'll be, individuals, you know, there'd be limited things. This is why we have a law. Law is meant for those who are lawbreakers and break those, those you know, break that common trust, that, that common wealth. 
This is why law is important. It's not meant for a righteous person or a person who's seeking to do things rightly. Because a person who's seeking to do it rightly is not going to do anything that's so 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 um, violating of other people's rights that it has to come under. In other words, it has to come under law. In other words, but um, just think about some of this. There's more that I want to share on this, but um, I just wanted to to say a couple of words on this. Um, Africa and investing in Africa and say even though the movement is in a state of inertia, it's 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 I won't I won't say it's never too late because it will there will be a time when it will be too late. We see changes, you know, happening if we as black folks and our Negro nigger um 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 going down to Egypt ancestors, if they considered Ethiopia and that connection was made, if Malcolm X you know, uh, did something a little bit differently. Like if he stayed in Ethiopia, when the young Ethiopians and the other African um, 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 students had asked him, stay there, build the OAAU here, like the OAU, you know, and then you can make that bridge. But he was like, no, he had to come back and get caught up in this foolishness. And we see how that ended as well. So if things was different, you understand? We could have taken advantage of certain opportunities that we had back in, in, in the in the in the fifties and sixties, um, and even a portion of the years in the seventies. Who knows? Even the godless and creeping coup in Ethiopia might have never happened. So there's a whole put, uh, potential alternative reality that could have been. And we just point out not to get too absorbed in it and fantasize too much about it because that's not the reality we're dealing with. It's just saying that how the decisions of individuals, individual decisions and then indivi uh, um, groups of individuals coming together and working together, how it has a, a, a dramatic and even a potentially climatic effect, not just on them, but even the course of affairs in, in, in the world. But the whole thing about Africa, I say this, if there's others, if there's other black folks who will be like, fuck Africa, man. They sold in slavery, Africa. Fuck that shit. I ain't going to Africa. I ain't no African. You know, if they come across with those kind of ways, leave them. You know, I mean, they're, like a, they're almost like a Judas goat in a sense. You know, leave them. You know, allow them. You see, and that's another level we want to speak about, too, you know, Sam, because too many of us are trying to convince folks who've already made their decisions, you know, and no amount of information that we're bringing to them. Like we said, there are some people, the Bible says, who, who, have, um, their, um, who have been captive by the devil to do his will, right, against their, against their will, by the devil's will, not their will. You understand? Some have been ensnared and trapped. And then you have some folks who have made a deal with the devil or who have consciously and willingly sold their souls. Now, the one who has been taken captive by Satan or by Diablos, you understand, or his, his men and people devils, you understand, to do their will, you might have a better opportunity of reaching some of them if you have the glorious gospel and if you have faith and are walking in it. You have more of an opportunity to reach potentially them. But even if you don't, everyone has to make their own, you know, at their, at their full age and, and, and sentience and consciousness, they have to make their own decision. But then when you meet the sort of folks who have sold their souls to the devil, right, when you meet those sort of folks, I mean, I mean, what? You know, what? I and I, brother, what? I and I, sister, what? I and I, mother, what can be done for them? They've already made, what we tell them is of the impending judgment, both in this world and the world to come. And, and even tell them the opportunity to repent, you understand, and to change your mind and to think differently about the deal you're making with the devil, you know, and that world conformity to think differently about it, but we're not to stop the the progress, you know, of of the ministry of the King of Kings and His Christ, the progress of of the Exodus, you know, the coming out of Babylon, the investing, 
you know, in the promised land in Africa. The opportunity is still there. Yeah, a lot of Asians and a lot of Chinese and a lot of Indians and a lot of other people and a lot of white people going back to Africa. So what? So what? You see, but you speak, when, when we speak to those sort of folks who are speaking to ones who have a lot of fear, they have fear and phobia issues. What's so interesting is that you're not afraid to deal with these same white folks and Chinese and Asians here in America. You know, you don't say a lot of Asians and, and Indians and Arabs and others have been coming over here to America. That, that doesn't make you say, oh, man, I got to get out here and go to Africa. <laughs> and, and some won't say that. And we have to pray to the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, that we have enough spiritual strength and maturity, you know, to recognize that, we can, unfortunately, we can't bid them um, shalom or salam or Godspeed with what they're doing. You understand? We just have to say, so be it. You know, we say, Amen. 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 We say amen to blessings, and we say amen to curses. Speaking about divine curses, you know, he who blasphemes the King of Kings and his Christ shall be judged. Amen. And blessed be us who love his majesty and his Christ. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, uh, this is just a, a, a word, a sharing a word to you all, and stay tuned, y'all willing, um, and... Uh, Get this book if you can, you know, get this book. We should have it. We're, we're going to try to have it. I'll check on it. We'll try to have it at our website. You understand? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, the question you have to ask is this, because we all are, but to recognize when. Are you under spiritual attack and what to do about it, you know? Um, for those who have uh, accepted the good news, the glorious gospel, the King of Kings and his Christ, and who who have either repented or are in that process of being born again, the brothers and sisters, especially the brothers, the Lidges, the Lidjoch out there, um, working on a new document that speaks to those, um, those brothers and sisters, mainly the brothers, because the brothers have a, a particular, we have a particular um, responsibility, you understand, as the Ras, you know, as the Rases. So we are a document that can help the, and hopefully will be able to help the brothers and sisters as well as to, to increase the discipleship and our unity. I'm going to let the brothers and them know when the, when the document is ready or in publication. But until then, um, Shalom Rastafari.